I was kind of worried about lighting because I'm filming earlier than usual, but this is working for me. I think we're going to be okay today. <laughs> hey guys, it's Summer, and today I'm going to be doing a series review on the Generations Trilogy by Scott Sigler. Um, Scott has asked people that to review it and, you know, give your thoughts on it, but to keep it spoiler free just because this trilogy is just so mysterious that the best way to go into it is knowing nothing at all. Or like at least just the bare minimum just to kind of get you interested. Um, but I went into the series not knowing too much and I think that was the best way to go into it because it was just such a good like reading experience that way. So the trilogy consists of the first book which is called Alive. It's 345 pages and it was published in 2015. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars when I read it. The second book in the series is A Light and it has 448 pages and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars when I read it. The last book alone has 539 pages and it was actually published this month so it just barely came out and I gave this one a like 3.5 out of 5 stars. So the genre or genres that I would kind of like fit these books into is sci-fi, mystery, horror, thriller and there's also kind of like some ancient civilization vibes that are kind of in there which was totally my jam like I was loving it the other thing that I kind of wanted to mention off to the side is that you guys know I love audiobooks and I actually listened to the first two books in the series on audio because Scott actually made them into serialized audiobooks so um the first book alive it's either um in podcast form or on YouTube so you can go either way and so I'll just kind of link where I watched it on YouTube. So it got ser serialized when it first got published, but now they're all out. So you can just binge listen to it like a real audiobook. And same with the second book, Alight. And I'm pretty sure they'll be doing that with the last book alone, but I just don't haven't looked for it because I'm already finished reading it. But I'll kind of like link where you can find those audiobooks below because I really did like the audiobook. I liked who narrated it. I felt that the pacing was really good. It just like, it was a good way to experience the books. I also have to say I really like these covers. They all like have stuff on the covers that you have to have read the story to know to look for them or know what certain things mean. So I kind of like that about these books too. They were very like thought out, I think. So the first book, Alive, is basically about this girl who wakes up in what she believes to be a coffin. And she gets out of the coffin and realizes that she's in a room full of other coffins. So it's really creepy and eerie. And so she gets these other people out of the coffins and they all believe that it's their 12th birthday but they're actually like all in young adult adult bodies like 18 to 20 year old is kind of what they look like but they have like the mindset of 12 year olds so it's super interesting to kind of have that dynamic going on so you just kind of follow them breaking out of the room discovering that they're kind of surrounded by death and destruction everywhere that they go just trying to figure out what the hell is happening to them and then on top of all of that you, these are like a group of basically 12 year olds that really don't they're not thinking like adults in this kind of situation and so there's a lot of power struggles going on because everybody wants to be in charge of the group everybody wants a weapon like that kind of stuff just a couple other things that are not spoilery that i thought were good things about this trilogy there were relationships and romances in this but i felt like they didn't take control over the story they were just kind of in the midst of everything happening to these people there was a little bit of like of course you're gonna have relationships and friendships and develop feelings for people kind of a thing, but they didn't take over the whole story, which I really liked. I also just really liked that with relationships, it kind of explored that people change and relationships change and love changes kind of a thing. And I really appreciated that. I also did really love all of the friendships in this book because in a group of people where nobody knows what's going on, you have to like find people that you can trust and get along with because if you don't have that, you're gonna go crazy. A few of my favorite characters, this isn't spoiling anything because you'll learn who all these people are anyway. One of my favorite characters from the get-go is Spingate. I love her. She's such a strong character, but it's not because of really physical strength, it's because she's really smart. And she's also just a really good friend and she's really loyal to people and I just really loved her character. And then another one kind of later in the books is Maria. Her character development was just so good. Basically everybody's character development is awesome, but hers especially, I loved and she's just a badass so I'm all about her and I will say the reason that I gave the last book alone a 3.5 instead of a 4 star is just because a couple of the things like how the series wrapped up a few of the things were a little too sci-fi for me they got a little bit too weird 
and there were just a couple things that I wish would have ended a little bit differently, but I mean, I kind of was expecting a lot out of this last book, so maybe my expectations were a little too high. But I really did enjoy it, like, it was still a really good book, it was just like I couldn't quite give it a 4, you know? As a series though, I would definitely give this a 4 out of 5 stars altogether. It was super super good, super super entertaining, fast paced. And really quick, on the note of pacing, even though this is kind of like there's a mystery that you're kind of unfolding and you're learning what's happening or you're getting the story through unreliable narrators, you're getting information fast enough to keep you invested in the story. Because there's some like mysteries where you don't get answers fast enough and you just kind of lose interest because you're like, this is taking too long to figure out. I felt like we were getting stuff fast enough but still keeping you on the edge of your seat, like what's happening kind of a thing. So I felt like that was done really well. Yeah, overall I gave it a four out of five stars. You guys should definitely go read it. I really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.